Are you ready? There's one, there's one thing I've said every week, and I'm going to say that, I want to share that, and then we're going to pray and get started on today. And that is that we have created a parallel with the story of the Exodus of the Old Testament, where the people of God went out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, and we've created a parallel with that story as part of our own lives and our own life experience. So as we put it on the screen today, I want to take you back to this word picture. And I'd like you to just say this with me. Egypt is what? It is the land of what? Come on, talk to me, Bellevue, Tacoma. Land of what? The wilderness is what? It is the land of? Just enough. You leave Egypt, you get the wilderness, but God doesn't want His people to stop there or build houses there or say, this is the best I can do. Amen? He's got another place, a promised land, and that is called Canaan. It is the land of what? It is the land of? Say it again, more than enough. So if you're ready today to lean in, I want to talk to you about the fourth step to gaining ground. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. Say, I'm here. here. Say, I'm all here. here. How about we just say this out loud? Say, my heart is open. My My mind is ready. ready. Make me better, God, by your word. word. I proclaim proclaim. by faith. faith. I won't be the same again again. in Jesus' name. name. Can you shout a great big amen? amen? Amen. All right. Today we're going to talk about giving. Giving is a part of gaining ground. Giving is a part of gaining ground. Let me me show you a scripture in Proverbs chapter 11. This will get us off and going. Proverbs 11 verse 24 says, One man gives freely, yet gains even more, yet gains, gains, gains. He gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly or unnecessarily and comes to poverty. When you think of gaining ground financially, you would think that the more you keep the more ground that you gain. Am I right about that? We, we, you know, just our, it's counterintuitive to think that giving helps you literally gain ground, that giving is part of gaining ground. But the writer here is saying that when you withhold unduly or unnecessarily, or keep what you're supposed to give, he says that's when you come to poverty. He's emphasizing the message that giving is part of gaining. Giving is part of gaining. Giving is part, anybody want to loosen up with me a little bit? You want to say with me, giving is part of gaining. Say it again. Giving is part of gaining. Over and over again in the universe, we watch that God created the world that way. But let's just talk about it, first of all, in your own life. A couple of simple examples. If you want more energy, like if you're feeling like I'm just drained and you know that, man, I I shouldn't have a lack of energy. Why do I lack energy? How do I get more energy? The key is what? Give some of your energy. If you give some energy, what do you get back? You get back what? More energy. Am I right? Some of you right now, like, come on now, not, not. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Like, you want, you want more strength. You want to get stronger. What do you do? 
You go to a gym and you grab a hold of some dumbbells and you give your strength, your current level of strength. And what begins to happen? The phenomena of the world and the way God created us and everything in the world to function kicks into place. And you're giving out the strength you have and the result is what? More strength. Giving is part of gaining. I just feel like some folks, honestly, today is the revelation day for you in gaining ground. Because there's some folks who, this is the area that you've ne- it's never made sense to you. You've always thought suspiciously about people who would talk about giving. You've always thought like in church, when we talk about giving or we read a scripture, you've kind of developed a little something in resistance that's like, oh, all you want is, you know, my money. And you've gotten really guarded in an area where actually it's not about helping other people or helping a church. It's not about that only. It's about you actually giving so that you open up the opportunity for God and the universe and the people and everything the way God created it to function to give back into your own life. The Bible says that the generous, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller I just feel like somebody can get some help today. Like your heart can be open, and this is the area of your life where God would really help you to begin to open up your mind to the idea that I can gain by giving. I, when I give, I gain, all right? So giving begins with tithing. As the people of God in our story, our illustration, moved out of Egypt and into Canaan, God began to transition them out of the life and the mentality of slavery, a life of dependency. That's all they'd ever known. 400 years they had lived there. So children growing up there, people who were adults now, all they knew was slavery. And God starts to provide structure for them to be a self-governing people, a free people, a, a prosperous people. So if you were to want to look at it, you would go to the book of Exodus in the Bible or the book of Leviticus, and let me warn you, it's like reading legal documents. Like, it's not very exciting. Like, it's pretty boring stuff. But what was happening was that God was downloading to them a structure for where they were going in their life. And God was beginning to teach them here's the civil laws that I want you to embrace. Here's the moral laws that I want you to live by. Here's the business and the social laws that I want you to start activating and to make yours in your life. Now, again, they're in the wilderness. Like they're, like, and, and part of that, again, was that He brought them back to the principle of tithing. A lot of people think that tithing actually began there in the law. It did not begin there. It started way back with our fathers of the faith, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, way back in the book of Genesis. So before there was ever a law, God's people were honoring him with a tithe. Now, he brings it back, puts it on the table for them as part of a structure toward a new life, a better life. And and if you could imagine being out there having really nothing, you're in the wilderness, all you're getting is some manna in the morning right? And he starts downloading the structure, part of it being like tithing. What's happening here is that God's getting them ready, and he has to start with their thinking. He has to start with their mind. He has to start with their thoughts. A lot lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people think, when I get to a better place, then I'll have better thoughts. That's not the way it works. You start thinking better, and then you go somewhere better. I said you start thinking better. 
right? The Bible, the Bible literally teaches us as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So God's saying, I don't want you to get out here to this land and still think like slaves. I, I want you to think like a self-governing people, not dependent, not entitlement. I want you to start thinking like landowners. I want you to start thinking like farmers who are going to have to sow some seed to get a harvest. Let me show you Leviticus 27 and verse 30. Here's what, here's what it says. It says, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. This is what, part of what God was saying to them while they're in the wilderness. It belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Now, when I was growing up in a Pentecostal church environment, um, we thought of holy, when the word holy, we thought of it as rules that we were supposed to abide by. I, I don't know what you think of when you hear the word holy. It, it would totally depend on your background, whether you were in church, not in church, what kind of church. When you hear holy, there's going to be some, some sort of a mindset, what, what it means, an interpretation of that word. So, you know, for us, it was, it was clean, abide by the rules, be clean, undefiled, and that was like the extent of the word. I want to share with you, the word holy actually means set apart. Set apart. When you see holy, it means to be separated or set apart for the Lord's use. So tithing isn't the same as or intended, you know, to be mixed in with other forms of giving. God sees our tithe as set apart. Set, you want to say it with me? Say set apart. set apart. Say it again, set apart. Now, uh, no, everybody gets a pass today, no condemnation. If you've not, you know, like if you've thought, well, you know, my, my neighbor needs a new roof and I went over and helped them and I just took some of my tithes, my 10%, like, and used it to help a neighbor. I, I saw someone in need. I gave. I helped them. Now, if you've thought that, shame off you. I'm not here to condemn anybody today. I'm just here to, I'm here to uh, talk about some truth and to help maybe you understand. This is one of the things, by the way, I'll deal with in Dumb Dichotomy series, is that sometimes, you know, people who embrace grace, they feel like they can do away with truth. And truth doesn't eliminate grace, and grace doesn't eliminate truth. Talking about dumb dichotomies right now. Um, they, they both, they both dwell side by side. So don't, don't get like defensive about a truth like this. We're just sharing truth that what a tithe is, and God sees it as being set apart for Him. So all of us are part of the global church today, worldwide. We're here to see as many people Hear the gospel, know the gospel, and find salvation. So today, the tithe, our tithe is set apart for that. And that's how God views the tithe, okay? So, so a lifestyle of giving is not just based on others needing to receive, but it's also based on my need to give. I don't know if you've ever thought about giving that way or not, um, but I need to give. You want to say that? Say, I need to give. I'm better when I give. See, I've realized I'm more like God when, when, in fact, let me just say this to you, you're never more like God than when you give. I'm stretched, I'm strengthened when I give. I get bigger on the inside when I give. Greed is squashed. By giving. A lot of people see someone who has a lot of wealth and so forth, and they, they automatically assume that person's greedy. Can I just say to you that greed comes in all forms of economic status? Some people actually who have a lot, they're not greedy. They're generous. And some people who have very little are really, really greedy. But giving squashes greed. I said giving squashes 
grieve. We encourage people to have giving plans, in fact, at Champion Center. We hand out cards. And if you've not seen them, maybe we have a picture on the screen just to show you what it looks like. Well, why do we do this? Because we want people to know that the giving that we do actually is part of gaining ground. And to think about your giving, to consider your giving, to, we, we don't ask for the numbers or the information from people, but we ask you to think about it and to consider it. Some people give online, some people give at church. Some people right now, as I started preaching about giving, are going, oh boy, and they started giving right now. Like, it's like, like people give everywhere from all positions and walks of life. I understand that. What we keep on saying, and we'll never stop giving, is don't let giving be a reaction or something you just do like, uh, you know, sentimentally in a moment. When don't, don't let your giving, like when you're sitting in front of a TV and you know, I think that's given a bad name to giving, like preachers get, and there's manipulative stuff that goes on. And even with some of the programs that have, you know, compassion driven, they show you the little hurting children. And man, of course, you're like, like you want to help. And, but can I just encourage you, have a giving plan. What you do above and beyond is great, but start off with a systematic, foundational giving plan in your life. If you've ever watched or been approached, I should say, by a person in need, a homeless person, I think most of us have, then you know what it feels like to want to help others but not be sure how to help them. Am I right about that? Like, like I feel that way um, when I'm on the streets in the city and someone, I'm, I'm like, I'm not really sure in that moment uh, well, like, uh, if I give them something, am I actually hel- helping them or hurting them? Am I enabling a lifestyle that's sabotaging their future if I just give that? Or, or am I actually helping them like they're hungry and they need a meal? So we have a foundation called Champions Foundation, which educates people on ways to help people in need. And this is a perfect time to give a great big shout out to all of the, those who give to Champions Foundation and volunteer for Champion Foundation. Come on, who help us help people. I think you can do better than that. I'm just gonna stop right now and I wanna give a deserved thank you to all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so thankful. So, so here's the dilemma, in other words, here's what it does for me. And, and that is that I need to give. So if I give to a place like our foundation, we work with all sorts of other organizations, and there's a process through which we help people. I can give with confidence, in other words, and, and something like that, because I need to give. So when I'm standing with a person on the street corner and I'm in that dilemma, that's a, that's, a, that's a bummer, like, to be in that, and you don't know, but, but yet I need to help hurting people. I have a need to care, to have compassion, to not just, you know, if, I, if I'm in the land of more than enough, I need to help people in Egypt. I need to give. I need to give. I'm better when I give. I was sitting in a restaurant, and I noticed Bill and Melinda Gates sitting in the corner booth of this restaurant. So I called the waiter over, and, and I, I told him, like, really quiet like this. I said, hey, I noticed the Gates are eating here today at the restaurant, and I want to buy their meal. The guy looked at me stunned, like, I repeated myself. Like, you he couldn't get his head around that. He left me. He went to the manager of the restaurant. Paranoia broke out. The manager goes to Bill. Now, there's not very many people in the restaurant, and we're just right there, not far away. And the manager goes to Bill, and I see the manager at the table, and then I see Bill kind of look back around in my direction, and the manager is pointing. (laughs) 
It's like awkward. This is really, this is really awkward. What, what, like, what do you do? Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> so I, I, I guess I didn't look like a gangster or a stalker. I was allowed to buy their meal that day. Uh, but the point is, is that no one could imagine why I would want to do that. They didn't know that, number one, I was thinking about a few years earlier. Like, I saw, that's the first time and only time I've ever seen him in person. But I, my mind flashed back to a day when I was watching the news, and, and Bill Gates had got a pie in the face from some haters. He had a suit and a tie on, walked out of an office building, and bam, pie just whipped cream, drip, and they showed it all over the world. And guys, you got to know haters are going to hate. Anybody figure that out yet? Haters are going to hate. If somebody succeeds and it's not them, they, they hate. Somebody advances, gains some ground, get ready. Some of you are gaining some ground right now, and you're going to start celebrating it and thanking God for it. And somebody's going to, they're not going to have a kind word. They're going to have a little bit of strife and just get ready. Haters going to hate. 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 <laughs> lovers going to love. Lovers going to love. Haters going to hate. I was thinking about that day, though, and how it had, it had provoked something in me of, like, why, why do people do this? Like, why, why would you do that? Like, why would, how can you, like, hate like that? Well, it's harmless. Just to, to me, it was like, it just represented such a flaw of humanity. And then my mind was also, let me tell you a little more where my head was in that moment. My mind went to the people who have jobs because of that man. I thought about the, the charitable works that this man had done for people to benefit from in the Northwest and all around the world. I thought about the people employed at Microsoft who go to Champion Center and give. I was just connecting the dots. And I'm thinking they have a job. They're blessed. They have family. They're, they have a home. They give to God all, because of His dream and His gift. And I realized that I had an opportunity to express gratitude and honor to the greatness in Him. And, and I thought to myself, like, I may never get this chance again. And some are going to throw a pie. I'm going to buy a meal. Like, I, I, and, and so the point is, here, here's the point. Wait, you can clap in a minute. Thank you, thank you. But the point is this, is that it wasn't about him needing me to buy him a meal. He could have bought a thousand of those restaurants, probably 10,000 of those restaurants. He didn't need me to buy him a meal. Some people just get hung up on, well, do they need, do they need? Sometimes it's not about them needing you to do something for them. We need to give. And that day I needed to give. I needed it wasn't for about him. It was a, go ahead, you can clap now. It was about a moment I needed to give. It's not just based on other need to receive, but it's also based on my need to give. The more than enough life provides an opportunity for you to give what you don't have in the land of just enough. So don't let the primary reason for gaining ground to be about buying bigger toys and having greater luxuries. There's nothing wrong with you having great toys and luxuries and so forth, but as you receive more, make it your goal to give more. Look in the camera right here. As you receive more. Everybody say, I love my pastor. Say, he's fearless. fearless. Kind of, sort of, not really, but. <laughs> make it your goal as you receive more to give more. I love this story. In 1970, a man named David Green took out a $600 loan, started a home business called Graco Products. He started in his garage. He was just simply assembling and selling miniature picture frames. Two years later, the business had thrived to, to, to the point where they were able to open up their first store, which had 300 square feet of retail space. Started with a loan for $600, okay, goes to a store, but gets his first store. Today, David Green is the owner of Hobby Lobby Stores nationwide. Now, don't, don't clap yet. There is more. 
he commits half of his total pre-tax earnings to a portfolio of Christian ministries, churches, 50% pre-tax. I don't have the latest stats, but as of 2012, he had given an estimated $500 million to spreading the gospel across our nation and around the world. You ought to be clapping, you ought to be, come on, let's thank God for people like that. That's an amazing example of what we see on a much smaller scale of people in our own church who give higher and increasing percentages of their income. Once a year, we, we have this big offering day. You guys, you know about Le- Legacy Weekend. We've called it Liberty Offering uh, Weekend for many, many years. We bring our biggest and our best. I want to tell you today, it's not in May. Everybody say, not in May. Not in May. Say, not in May. Not in May. Everybody shout, November. November. Everybody say, November. November. Say, I got more time. I, got more time. I can plan better. Come on, I can be ready. Say, not May, but November. Amen. Let me go to the next one. A lifestyle of giving creates, this is my last point, creates an inevitable response in heaven and in earth. Inevitable, 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 inevitable. Can't stop it. Can't block it. Can't hinder it. You ever heard of karma? (laughs) Karma is a word rooted in Hindu philosophy, and it's the law of cause and effect. Actually, most, if not all, religions in the world teach this principle in one way or another. Right? It basically what what goes around. So many people buy into this. Even if you're not related, like yeah, I've seen that. It's really true. Like what goes around comes around. I prefer personally to call it pharma. <laughs> pharma, good pharma. I did a whole series on pharma. You say why, Pastor Kevin? Because the Bible explains this law as sowing and reaping. So I just coined a phrase. It's not really a word. I just made it up. It sounded right to me. It's not, I don't use karma. I call it pharma. Everybody shout pharma. Pharma. Say good pharma. pharma. Come on, say it works. works. Say it's very real. real. Come on, say what goes around, around. comes around. around. Say cause Cause. and effect. I want to show you some verses, and we're going to close with these verses. Today, I just want to put them out there in front of you, and I hope you're bold enough to kind of just kind of lean into this and, and look at the Bible having to do with this whole principle. It creates an inevitable response in heaven and earth. Genesis 8 says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest will never stop. Other stuff might stop. This one never stops. Sow your seed. Sow your seed. There'll always be a harvest. Galatians 6 says, Whatever a man sows, he also will reap. Whatever a man sows, he also, there it is. Pharma, pharma, pharma. It's bad pharma sometimes, but I like good pharma. I like sowing the good thing. Give, Jesus said it like this. Look at that, Luke 6, 38. It's inevitable. Guys, it's inevitable. How is giving part of gaining ground? Pastor, you sure you didn't make this up like, because you want to talk to us about giving and, and tithe and all of that, I promise you guys, I'm coming here today with honest truth that if you really want to gain ground in your life, this principle is part of gaining ground. Jesus said, give, and it shall be what? How about we read that one out loud? You ready? Say with me. Give, and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can hold it back. 
Let's not just be a church that talks big. Let's give big. Giving is part of gaining. Let's not just be people who talk about, you know, uh, this bad, bad world that we live in, this dark world. let's, Let's be the light. Let's make a difference. Let's give out smiles everywhere. (laughs) free of charge. Let's be generous in gestures. Let's greet with some high fives. Let's give out worship. And let's give of our finances. When When God talks to you about giving, just make it a solid, amen, level of obedience. Because I promise you, you'll never lack You'll never be without. You'll never go hungry. The psalmist said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Giving is part of gaining. Giving is part of gaining. Giving is part. Do I have any givers in the house who are glad to be affirmed and, and encouraged and thankful? Come on, thankful. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to close our series in, in prayer. And uh, I'm going to ask nobody to leave. Church isn't done. I like the confidence to be able to do this with not feeling like people are going to head for the doors prematurely. Please don't do that today. And I'm going to actually ask everyone up high, in the middle, down low, if you would, to just join us in standing to your feet there in Bellevue as well as here in Tacoma. And I've asked the team to bring out and stand beside me with our 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 giving cards, our plan giving cards. And if you don't have one, you want one, stop by a tent today, pick one up. It's a fun and fulfilling and rewarding opportunity for you to engage in before God, okay? So so they're here today, and I'm gonna ask everyone else, by the way, if you have friends who are right now in need, why why don't you pray for them right now? If you're in a position right now where these messages have even like just, I don't know, they've almost irritated or bothered you because you feel like you, you, you can't get out of where you are. How, how about we pray about that? How, how about we ask the, the God of heaven to show up in our lives? Does anybody believe, do, does anybody believe in miracles? Do, do you believe that God can do what man cannot do? Do, does, uh, do we believe that? And and so let's pray for one another, and let's pray for people that we know who are maybe without a job right now. Let's just just reach out to God because He declared Himself to be Jehovah Jireh. He said, I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, your provider. And I am El Shaddai, the God, in Hebrew it means the God of more than enough. And I can't help but believe that He is right here for us today. And when we call on Him, God will do things on our behalf. He will work in our lives, amen, and do something significant as we apply our faith. So would you, would you join us all around? Uh, uh, online, you can join us too, but stretch your hands toward the front uh, if you want, or just toward heaven is okay as well. Father, I thank you today for the opportunity I've had the last four weeks to help people. I thank you, God, for the opportunity we've all had together in groups and to share our stories and to share with one another and to encourage each other. Now we look heavenward, God. As we finish out this series, we just look to you and I ask you today, God, that for for those who feel overwhelmed, for those who feel God alone, for those who feel like they're in a position of lack and insufficiency and don't know how to get out of it. I pray for them today that there would be hope in the name of Jesus. I pray for them today that there would be strength in the name of Jesus. I pray for people who are in the wilderness today, God, that there would be freedom in Jesus' name. Freedom, progress, 
in Jesus' name. May no one be discouraged. May no one feel overwhelmed. May no one stay in the prison and in the bondage, God, even if they've inherited generationally. Our prayer toward heaven today, God, is that there would be freedom in Jesus' name, new beginnings in Jesus' name, no longer fear in Jesus' name. The power of fear is broken in Jesus' name. Any fear of giving is lifted in Jesus' name. Fear of not trying, fear of not being able to do it. Come on, I'm a child of God. 